Today's tasks are putting the brake light on uh, with the pressure sensor so we now have brake lights and wiring it up um, so we can then do track days and then also putting on the front bonnet um, with uh, some clips that I've got. You can see I've already had a go at this and completely mauled it all. I've bought a load of clips, so I've got these springy bonnet clips, I've got these sort of rods uh, and I've got some extras of those so I can fit that bonnet so with all these bits I should be able to fit that onto there. I'm going to put one here, one here and underneath this bodywork well, I'm going to put that clip there, well not there but you know around here and then underneath the bodywork I'm going to back it with this aluminium piece just to spread the load underneath because this is, this is quite thin. those body springs are on but um, yeah they don't look great do they they're not very asymmetrical or well, they're not very symmetrical um, but they're on so the next job is to put the mirrors on so here are the mirrors um, they this does move they're not two left-hand mirrors so reference for anybody they cancel put around and there's um I think there's an allen key in the hole in the top there so you can actually fix these in place and then they sort of move around on a ball there so they can be adjusted. I put them through a hole somewhere here on each side, I think. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the rear bodywork first so that the rear bodywork, well, I can see past the rear bodywork basically. My drop locks have arrived, they're bolting ones, so all I need to do is draw some holes in the top of the trailer and I can attach my light bulb. This afternoon's task is to try and attach the brake light and the sensor so we can use the brakes. Here are the parts I've got to do the job. Obviously I've got the light, I've got some connectors, I've got this piece which will go straight into the caliper and then the hose will just screw into the end and then I've got the actual pressure switch itself as well. Some connectors for that uh, and then this for mounting the light itself onto the diffuser. This is actually a taper thread um, so I'm going to need some PTFE tape um, to put it into there. I'd have rather had a straight thread but um, I didn't pay attention when I ordered it so uh, I'm going to have to deal with the, the taper thread unfortunately. But I'm going to put it in this end rather than that end because there's a little bit of weight to it and it'll put a bit less mechanical strain on the connector with that further inwards. Not a fan of spade connections but I've, I've put a bit of solder on there to help it and then I'm going to sleeve it after like this one battery, light. Okay, what I'm going to do for the wiring is I'm going to wire it into the rain light circuit. So when you turn the rain light switch on, you also get the brake light. It's probably not a bad thing having a brake light um, showing one while I'm racing in the wet. So when I'm on the track day I'll have the rain light come on so you can clearly see the car and have an additional brake light as well.
there we go I've added the switch and put the cable back in there with some fresh um, copper washers uh, that side if you remember was leaking so I put some fresh copper washers in in there focus and then I've got the brake light and the rain light all wired up together I need to get some of these more of these clips like this uh, to stick onto the diffuser Well, the rear brakes definitely need bleeding, but we were able to generate enough pressure to actually test the brake light and it works, so that's a result. Unfortunately, one of my friends and rivals at Silverstone lost an engine. Um, it could have been avoided maybe if they had a clear indication that the oil pressure had dropped. Um, obviously it was displayed on the device that they had, but there wasn't an alarm or, or maybe it just wasn't clear enough. Fortunately, I've got that SPA um, device there that actually has an alarm output as well so I'm going to hook up a light um, to it that should flash when we have an oil pressure problem. Well here's the, the unit taken out and the plug doesn't have any pins in it so I'm going to have to order some pins and um, well first try and work out what plug that is order the pins and then uh, do this at a later date. Those pins on that SPA gauge are Molex connectors, so I've ordered some female pins and hopefully that means I can add those alarms onto, you can see circled there, one and seven. Uh, one being channel one, which is the oil sensor uh, alarm, and then seven being the temperature sensor alarm. I've just measured on the original steering rack the diameter of the rack itself. Um, basically I need to put some lock stops on it to prevent the wheels overturning. So I looked at the, um, the rack dimension, it came out at 21.4, which is an odd size. So I'm gonna check the actual rack and see if it's the same, because um, we're gonna need to order a clamp on lock, you know, stop um, for it. Um, if it's 21.4, that comes out at 27.32 inch, which is, like I said, a bit of an odd size. So let's double check the rack. Yep, 21.4. I'm going to order two 7.8s or 22 mil collars. They might be a little bit oversized and if they are and they won't go on I'll just line them with rubber just to space it out a bit and fit on the steering rack and that should limit rack movement.